Hey everyone, welcome to the webinar on accelerating robotics machine learning with VM and NVIDIA. In this demo, we'll be showing you how to fast track your machine learning model training and deployment using VM and NVIDIA's Jetson Orin Nano. In as little as five minutes, you can collect data and train your own models without building custom infrastructure and learning specialized tools, and you can deploy your model to your robot easily. My name is Ariel. I'm a developer advocate from VM. VM is a complete software platform that supports every step of your robot development lifecycle. With the processing power of NVIDIA's hardware and VM's unified software, building powerful robots has never been simpler. Installing VM server on an NVIDIA board and beginning to configure and control your robot can be done in a matter of minutes. So what can you do with VM? VM provides an open source robot architecture that turns complex functionality into simple APIs with an integrated cloud service to orchestrate production deployments. Configuring a robot is as simple as choosing what component models and services make up your robot, at which point you can operate it securely from anywhere with any common software language. So far, we offer SDKs in Python, Go, TypeScript, C++, and Flutter. You can build simple robots or multi-part robots that use secure communication channels across local networks and the cloud, all of which that can be managed with a uniformed API. The web-based platform enables your team to manage, secure, and connect to every robot. In this webinar, we are going to show you how easy it is to use VM for machine learning. We will build a simple robot and we will train it and deploy a model. You'll see that we won't spend a lot of time on building this robot or training a model or even deploying it down to our robot. We've made production pipelines for machine learning that clean and simple. To demonstrate the full end-to-end -end experience of creating, configuring, and deploying a robot, let's view it in the frame of a case study. You own a plant shop with a variety of plants and a number of employees who are all incredibly knowledgeable on the different species of plants in your business's location. You know that to maintain your supply, you have to carefully nurture these plants and all of their specific needs from watering schedules to sunlight needs to specific soil and fertilizer requirements for their cycles of growth. Your employees also have to sell these plants. And with that comes the customer service of teaching buyers how to care for these plants and pointing them to proper resource guides. By leveraging the VM platform and the power of NVIDIA boards, including their powerful GPUs, you can collect data, create and leverage machine learning models, and manage your robots to expand your business's capabilities. To demonstrate this, let's build a simple robot that uses a Jetson Orin Nano, a camera, and a temperature sensor. With just these three pieces of hardware and the VM platform, you can create a powerful robot to accomplish these goals in just minutes. So I'm here to guide you through the process of getting VM up and running on an NVIDIA board. Assuming you've already powered up your NVIDIA board and set it up using the Developer Kit Getting Started Guide, there are only just a few steps standing between you and your next robot. First, initiate an SSH session onto your board. Next, create an account on app.vm.com if you haven't already. Once you've successfully SSH'd into your Jetson or a Nano, log into your VM app account. There, you can view robots that have been configured in your organization. An organization is a group of one or more locations that help you organize your fleet. An organization is the highest level grouping in the VM platform, which generally represents a company or other institution. Now we are gonna create a robot. Let's call our robot Plant Detector. We're doing this in real time to show you how simple it is to go from plugging in your hardware to running VM and using it to configure your robot. We are now redirected to the Setup tab, which gives us all of the instructions and prepackaged configurations to get VM server running on our Jetson or in Nano. Since the board runs Linux, let's make sure we are in Linux mode and we select the correct architecture, Arch64. In our active SSH session on our board, we now follow step one to copy and download the configuration file for this robot to the NVIDIA board. VM server uses the configuration file to connect to app.vm.com. Then, once that's done, we move to step two on the Setup tab, Download and Install VM Server. This will be the most recent stable VM Server app image package, and voila! You are now connected to VM Server on your board. You can confirm this by seeing your robot's live status with its host name and IP address. Now we can start configuring some hardware because what's a robot without some components? Let's talk about how hardware works with VM. 
many robotic components are natively supported by the VM platform. You will not need to write a single line of code to integrate them, and swapping out component models will not require any code changes. The config tab is where you tell VM what hardware makes up your robot. Within VM, a component represents a physical piece of electrical or electromechanical hardware in a robot. The first piece of hardware we have is our Jetson Aura Nano, our board. Since hardware is abstracted in our app, all you have to do is name your component, pick your component type, in this case a board, and for model, pick Jetson. Hit save and now your board is connected to VM. When VM software is running on a computer with GPIO pins accessible to external hardware components, it manages GPIO signaling to abstract control to resource APIs. This will help us control other hardware connected to the board without having to write any code. Now let's connect and configure a camera. This is an important component as we will be collecting image data to then train a model within our platform. Let's grab a webcam and plug it into our board. Here, we're just gonna use a USB-based camera, so this part is going to be pretty fast. Repeat the configuration process in app and name your camera, pick your type. For our model, we will use webcam and then we'll hit save. A discovery process is built into our system, so available video paths on your robot will be automatically detected. Hit save and now we can test our hardware in action. We can head to the control tab to test our hardware. A live stream of your camera in the control tab should now be viewable, which confirms your hardware is working. The control tab makes testing and debugging hardware configuration simple, and the configuration process is the same with any supported hardware. You can also control actuating hardware in the control tab. Now let's connect a sensor because we want to capture some tabular data from the plant's environment. A sensor is a device that can measure information about the outside world. Add a sensor component to your robot to send the information the sensor measures to the computer controlling the robot. In this case study, we're in a plant shop, so values like temperature and humidity would help efficiently monitor and care for the business's plant assets. Here, we are using a BME 280 environmental sensor, and we are going to connect this to our board's GPIO pins. Because hardware is abstracted in our app, a camera is a camera, a sensor is a sensor, we can grab pretty much any model of sensor off the shelf, put it on our robot, and all of our data on our robot will not be affected by this change. That means during a production run, you can upgrade and change hardware with no effect to any code or data. Now that we have all our hardware together, let's talk about another main facet of VM's platform's functionality. High-level services, including computer vision, data management, machine learning, and more, allow you to add advanced capabilities to your robots. In this case, we'll show you how to use VM's data capture and machine learning services. VM's data management service allows you to select data capture intervals for any of your components or services and allows you to sync capture data securely from there. You can filter your data, export it to other tools, and even label and train machine learning models for use on your robots directly from the VM app. Let's enable data capture from our sensor. These sensor readings will be synced and stored in the cloud and viewable in our app without having to write any code. We will enable data capture from our camera by choosing read images type where the data manager collects the output of the read image function returning sensor data from our camera. We will use these images to train a custom machine learning model from images synced in the cloud. Set the data capture frequency and your robot will automatically start collecting that data. Here we have our robot in our plant shop. We are placing the robot around the shop to collect image and sensor data. We have house plants of varying species. Capture as many images as you want. If possible, capture pictures of your plants from different angles and with different backgrounds. Now I'll show you how you can jump right into tagging and training a machine learning model. You can view the collected data in the data page and you can see image and sensor data. You can also filter by your robot name, location, or date. Imagine you have a fleet of robots in this plant shop and you want to train a model based on a select number of robots that collect images. 
Head over to the data page and select an image captured from your robot. After selecting the image, you can make custom annotations for any object you see in the image. The first thing you want to consider is what annotations you are trying to create and how you want your custom model to function. There are two methods of tagging images in our app. You can tag the whole image for training classification models, or you can use bounding boxes for detection models. For an object detection model, you can annotate images with the name of specific plant species and their location within the image by creating a bounding box. Notice that in our image collection, we captured images at different angles with different background compositions. This is to ensure that our model can continue to recognize the object no matter how your robot is viewing it through the camera. We will begin by selecting the image you would like to annotate, and you will see all of the data that is associated to that image. Type in the desired tag in the bounding box section. Here we are going to start adding bounding boxes to identify and locate different species of plants within the image. Here I'm cross-referencing the plant names with their labels in person on the planter pots, and I'm labeling and drawing bounding boxes around this ficus. Continue parsing through your collected data, in this case images, and create bounding boxes away until you have a sufficient amount of diverse object images for each label, and in this case, for each type of plant. Labels you have previously created can be selected from the recently used drop-down menu box, Upon completion of annotating your data set, you can now filter images according to those bounding box labels. Head over to the filtering menu and select a bounding box label from the drop down list. After annotating and filtering your images so that only the pictures of plants with specific tags or names are visible, you can then begin training your model directly from our app. Click the train model button and select the object detection option to create a detection model based on what objects are in and where they are located within an image. Once the model has finished training, you can deploy it onto your robot or even manage deployments to a robotic fleet. To configure your service and deploy a model directly onto your robot, select Deploy Model on Robot for the deployment field. You can then select your trained model as your desired model. To deploy a new model onto this robot, navigate to the robot page on the VM app and in the config tab, select services. Create a new service, select ML model as the type and name it plant model while selecting the TF Lite CPU as the model. Now here is where you want to leverage this custom machine learning model with our vision service. I'm going to show you how you can use a transform camera that applies the vision service to an existing camera stream. Create a new service and select vision and ML model as the type. Select the model that was previously created in the drop-down menu. Now we can go back to the Components tab and create a transformed camera with the name Detections Cam and type Camera and the model Transform. Now we're going to fill in some JSON attributes with an object that specifies the camera source for the transform camera and also defines a pipeline that adds the detector you created. We'll head back to the Control tab click on the transform cam, toggle it on, and now we can see our cameras doing detections in real time. Besides using our app to build your own TensorFlow Lite models using image data collected onto your robots, there are other ways you can harness the power of NVIDIA to utilize machine learning within Veeam. NVIDIA Orin boards are equipped with powerful GPUs exposed through the Triton API, and Veeam allows you to manage machine learning models that leverage these capabilities. This allows you to run larger models with faster performance, allowing you to offload work from the CPU. Because VM is extensible, we are able to build on top of tools created by NVIDIA using the modular registry. Modular resources can be made available for public use or for use within one's organization on the VM modular registry. Here we can visit the modular registry page and see a list of externally contributed as well as internal modules and we can pick what we want to use. Because this is a relatively new feature of our product, the list is small but mighty. We are counting on our growing developer community to contribute to the modular registry and help our developer ecosystem grow. Right now, I'm going to show you an example of how we are leveraging Triton Server with VM on an NVIDIA Jetson Orin Nano to show you a comparison. 
On this demo robot, we're going to show you a camera stream with a TensorFlow Lite model running on the CPU with the current built-in capabilities of VM's robot development kit. We are using the efficient detections model on moving cars on a street. The next camera stream I'm going to show you is a camera stream using a modular resource built on NVIDIA's Triton server on the GPU. Here, we are taking better advantage of the available hardware that makes full use of the resources available on the Orin device, freeing up CPU to offload other tasks for your robot. You can visually see that it is performing faster. Now that you know how to harness the power of the VM platform using NVIDIA boards, you can now train and deploy models to scale your robotic businesses and use robots just like the one we made today in businesses like this.